A steadily decreasing probability in a logistic regression with a numeric predictor is straightforward to interpret. However, in reality, the relationship between numeric predictors and binary outcomes is rarely linear. So, in the next few minutes, I'm going to show you a trick how to check for nonlinearity in your model, how to handle such nonlinearity with a very few lines of code, and how to extract and interpret the results. This technique will not only save you from mistakes, but also give you a lot of insights. We'll be using the CAR data package, which provides the ready-to-use Titanic survival dataset. In this dataset, we'll explore the probability of survival for individuals of different ages after the tragic Titanic accident. Logistic regression can be performed using the GLM function with a binomial family. This family allows us to model binary outcomes and calculate the slope of survival probability with increasing age. And when we look at our first results and see very small, negative and not significant decline in probability of survival, we might mistakenly conclude that age does not impact survival. But when we check for linearity, we will discover that it's absolutely wrong. And here is how we check for nonlinearity. First, we create three new models using the second, third, and fourth polynomial degrees based on age. As we increase the degree value, the model becomes better at capturing nonlinear relationships. However, in practice, degrees higher than 3 or 4 are rarely used due to the risk of overfitting, which makes the model overly complex and less interpretable, like in this example of the 10th polynomial degree. Next, we compare all the models we've created so far and select the one with the lowest AKX information criterion, AIC. The AIC provides a measure of the relative quality of statistical models. If an AIC value is at least two units lower, it indicates a significantly better fit. Thus, in our example, we could stick to the third polynomial degree and move on. But there is another useful technique that can help you decide which polynomial degree to choose. Namely, the top model function, which displays p-values for each degree. And since the p-value for the third polynomial degree is significant, while the first degree isn't, we'll once again choose the model with the third polynomial degree. Now that we know which model is best for our data, the only remaining question is, what does it mean and how should we interpret our model? Well, the significant coefficients for the higher degree terms, second and third, reveal a non-linear relationship between age and survival, a discovery that the typical logistic regression completely overlooked. This mistake is also known as type 2 error. The next step is crucial, yet sadly often overlooked. We must examine the model's assumptions to determine whether this model is any good. To achieve this, we'll use the phenomenal performance package and its intuitive check model function. This magical function automatically identifies the model type we are using and meticulously verifies all model assumptions specific to that type. Here is what it reveals. The posterior predictive check involves comparing the model's predicted intervals with the actual observed values. It helps us assess how well the model aligns with our data. Most residuals fall within the error bands with only three potential outliers. But the very next plot tells us that these outliers do not appear to be influential. Additionally, the residuals exhibit a uniform distribution. So the model seems to be OK and we are good to go. And since a picture is worth a thousand words, let's visualize how age influences survival probability. We'll use the sjplot package and its user-friendly plot model function to explore this relationship. The plot clearly shows that babies and young children have the highest survival rates. Survival probability then decreases until around age 25, before gradually increasing to a peak at approximately 53 years old. After this, it declines again. 
This pattern indicates two turning points and essentially divides the data into three distinct areas. To better understand these turning points, we can visualize specific ages by treating age as a categorical variable. The emmip function from the emmins package is ideal for this purpose. The first turning point arises from the interaction between the negative first order and positive second order terms, creating a parabolic shape. Initially, H negatively impacts survival, but this trend reverses after approximately 25 years. The second turning point is evident in the significant positive second order term and the subsequent negative third order term. This indicates another turning point in the age survival relationship, with survival rates decreasing again after the age of 53. These turning points underscore the complex nature of age survival relationship, where the effect of age on survival changes directions multiple times, emphasizing the need to account for nonlinear effects when using numeric predictors. By the way, we can easily save our plot in the format, quality, and size we need for our publication. And while the prediction plot is cool, it fails to provide three crucial elements that our publication requires whenever we conduct logistic regression. We need the exact probabilities along with their 95% confidence intervals. We need odds ratios with their confidence intervals to demonstrate the age-related differences. And to draw reliable conclusions, it's absolutely crucial to include p-values for both the predicted probabilities and odds ratios. To get all of that in one go, we'll use the immense function from the immense package. This function needs only six arguments. Our model object, the pairwise argument which compares all ages between each other, the name of our predictor, the argument at which allows us to determine the ages we want to compare, the type equals response argument which transforms locods into probabilities and locods ratios into more intuitive odds ratios, and finally, the infer equals true argument delivers the 95% confidence intervals for odds ratios and p-values for probabilities. But that's not all. It means automatically corrects those p-values for multiple comparisons using the Tukey method, which decreases the probability of discovering nonsense, also known as the type 1 error. By the way, I intentionally used a simple logistic regression without polynomial degree to demonstrate that we cannot differentiate between ages. This lack of differentiation is evident from the identical p-values across all contrasts. Our straightforward model implies a linear relationship between age and the probability of survival, revealing a consistent but statistically insignificant decline. But here is the exciting part. When we incorporate polynomial degrees into our model, we can distinguish significant differences in the odds of survival among different ages. Let's dive into interpreting our results right away. Let's start by examining the survival probabilities for different ages and their statistical significance. The p-values associated with these probabilities test a null hypothesis that the probability of survival is 50%. In other words, they tell us whether the chance of survival equals the chance of dying. For instance, consider the probability of survival for babies, which stands at 66%. Crucially, the confidence intervals do not include 50%. They remain above this threshold. This means that babies are significantly more likely to survive than die. The probability of survival for 25-year-old passengers is only 37.5%, well below 50%. Since their 95% confidence intervals also exclude 50% and fall below it, we can confidently say that the probability of survival is significantly lower than the probability of dying, which in this case would be 62.5%. Now, please pause the video and try to interpret the probability of survival for the 53-year-old passengers yourself. Alright, so we've seen that survival probabilities differ between ages, 
but we need odds ratios and p-values to determine if these differences are statistically significant. Thus, let's interpret odds ratios next. Of the survival odds for babies are approximately 3.3 times, or 230% greater than those for 25-year-olds. And this difference is statistically significant. Similarly, babies have roughly 2.6 times, or 160% higher survival odds compared to 53-year-olds, which is also significant. Lastly, since the odds ratio between 25-year-olds and 53-year-olds is close to 1, with confidence intervals containing 1, there is no significant difference in survival odds between these age groups. Specifically, 25-year-old passengers were 0.8 times as likely to survive compared to 53-year-old passengers. Now, this translates to a 20% lower odds of survival for 25-year-olds relative to the 53-year-old group. If you find positive odds ratios, those with odds ratios over 1 more intuitive to interpret, check out my previous video on logistic regression with categorical predictors. In that video, I delve into this topic extensively. Here is just a quick and useful code example for flipping odds ratios. By using pairs reverse true, you can transform any negative odds ratio into a positive value. Now, there are times when we need to report model equations. However, manually writing equations or using Microsoft Word can be quite cumbersome. Fortunately, the extract equation function from the Equatiomatic package automates this process, making it incredibly useful for publication. And if you found this video useful so far, please consider hitting the like button and joining the channel. And speaking of publishing our results, in order to produce the most complete picture possible, consider including not only equations, probabilities and odds ratios, but also descriptions of the polynomial degrees generated using the tab model function. To achieve this, utilize the report function from the report package. This function provides essential details about the model type, explanatory power, coefficient direction, significance, and even calculation of 95% confidence intervals and p-values. In fact, the report package can do so much more that I have created the whole video on it. And if you want to become significantly better data scientists in the next 8 minutes, just watch the report video next.